Hi guys, it's Cindy from Cindy's Art. I want to just talk with you for a few minutes about brushes. And I am just going to go straight off the cuff. And one thing I want you to know is that my first brushes was this brand. These are Golden Natural um, Silver. And um, they were inexpensive. I bought them off of the brush guys. Um, I can't find them anywhere else, which is fine because the brush guys always have um, their brushes, you know, a good amount off, 40, 50% off. You can always find those sales. So these brushes are a little firmer. And whenever I'm working on a small painting, I reach for these a lot. Um, so I don't care if they're more beginner style watercolor brushes, they're awesome. And the price is affordable too. The next brushes that I added in was, these are called Silver Black Velvet. Um, and these are awesome, nice and soft. They hold a lot of water and they hold a lot of paint, which is uh, what I really like. So this, these brushes I started off and I have really large sizes too. Um, I started off with a variety of sizes um, and I did like maybe a one inch flat uh, a 1210, 12, 10, uh, no, I, I did a 12, an 8, a 4, and a 2 sizes. That's what I started off with, which isn't much. These brushes I could find on the Brush Guys, Cheap Joe's, and on Amazon as well. There's another one, Blix. Um, so I could find these brushes in many locations. And I want to pause here for a second just to show you something about these brushes. Okay, do you see there's a little bit of a split there? These are all in really good condition, but this one looks a little fuzzy. Um, and this one has got a little bit of separation going on. And one thing I, I just want to mention to you, and this was why I did this video, was um, when my brushes are sitting, like I have my brushes organized in jars and I do it by brand. I do size and brand because my larger ones will go into another jar and this one um, will just sit out. I have a, a cart that I've shown you before and I'll put my variety of brushes in there. It's really nice, easy just to pull from. Well, that's great, but um, when brushes sit out like this, uh, they're gonna get dusty. And whenever you're going to start painting with your brushes, make sure you swoosh them in your water really good. Um, let me just take my brush. But for example, like this guy, I'm looking at him and I, I'm thinking two things. One is the hairs are a little bit separated. That means there's probably paint down in here from when I've been painting and I need to clean it out. The second thing is if I flip my brush like this, I might see dust uh, flying. Clean your brushes off really good. Um, so I might take my brush in my water and this might only be my rinse water. Um, I want something that's clean on my table. So I'll have one uh, bucket of water of where if I was just painting with dark blue, I'll put it in my dirty bucket and rinse it, and then I might finish it off in here. But the reason why those uh, bristles are separated is because there's some dust in them, and um, and also a little bit of paint. When paint gets down into um, the brush, it will separate the hairs. So wash your brushes, I would say, once a month. I have a very nice soap. It has a little bit of olive oil, um, and it's, it's specific soap for brushes. So I, I think that's a good idea to invest in that. It only might be four bucks for that. When you're painting with your brushes, um, I used to put my brush back in here to let it dry. And I am always have a, a, a cloth near me. So when I'm rinsing my brushes, I'll take it and I'll dab it in the towel to dry it off. And then normally I would put it this way. And I'm learning that's not the way to do it. When I'm using my brushes, now I will lay them down on my desk um, flat. And I might even lay them on top of this towel and let them dry. And the reason why is I'm not letting water, um, you know, stand here and go down into this brush stem, which 
if it's sat in water, we never let our brushes sit in water um, because that ultimately will undo the glue that's around the base of this. Doesn't matter how nice these are made, we have to treat them with care, uh, but it can undo that glue and that's where you'll start to have your hairs come out. Cheap brushes, your hairs will come out. You can't do much about it. Um, so anyway, let your brush dry flat on a surface and then like the next morning I'll come in and I'll, I'll set it aside. So anyway, I wanted you to know about that. Another set of brushes that I added in next was, I only did two of them because they're expensive. Um, I did these Princess, a uh, Prince, Princeton Neptune um, quills. And I want a smaller quill and I want a larger quill. I love quills. Um, this is a size four, this is a size eight. What's so special? Oh my God, when quills get wet, they just bend beautifully. I could um, write easily with them. They work great. Like if I'm laying a foundation of a wash in a, in a, in a pitcher, I can go around things really easy. They're just like the most beautiful paint brushes. Um, to use. So again, make sure you rinse your brushes out before you use them, especially in the winter time, you're looking at dust getting in. One way that you could avoid some of that dust is I take clear plastic Ziploc bags and I might put a Ziploc bag, it's kind of a pain, so I'm not doing it right now, but I can put a, a Ziploc bag on top of this and just let it sit there. It protects the brushes. Make sure they're dry. I just got these wet, so I have to take them out, let them dry flat. So um, you can organize your brushes. People do it in so many different ways. Um, I, I like color, I like jars, it's pathetic. So uh, anyway, this was another set. I just started to add in um, some of their other things. One, one brush is called a dagger. There's scripts. Scripts usually have like a longer uh, brush thing to them. Um, and then uh, this one, I don't know what this one is. Could be a liner, it's really small. So um, I always watch to get my brushes on sale. Cheap Joe's, I really like. I, I do watch Amazon and I put Amazon prices in my stuff because um, there's good stuff out there. And another thing that I added in when I was first starting off were flat chisel brushes. And flat chisel brushes are great for lifting paint off. Um, these are both Princeton. This is uh, a Princeton Velvet Touch number six. And this one is a Princeton Select number 10. Um, I like them both. I think if I bought them again, I might go for the blue. I'm not sure why. I think it might be because it's a little bit more rigid. Um, the next brushes I added in, and this will be it. I have some other ones, but I'll show you another time. Um, these are Princeton Elites. And the Aquil Elites, I started off with just a few. I start off with maybe a, a, a four, an eight, and a 12. Um, I, just so I can get a feel for the brush. These are more rigid. I love them. They're more rigid. Um, they don't necessarily carry as much wa um, water in paint as this, but I don't mind. If I'm working on hot press paper, the rigid, um, I like it a little bit better because I dab color in. And whenever I'm working on hot press, I seem to reach for my Golden Naturals and these Princeton Aqua Elites. Um, I also bought, um, I looked for a sale. I think I paid 40 bucks, but maybe I got like three of these. I, a nice big wash. Um, and um, anyway, you have to watch for the sales. Uh, so I wound up adding in all of these this past year. And so how can you afford some of your watercolor supplies? Listen, if you're making stuff, first of all, make sure you buy quality paper because quality paper is gonna make all the difference of how your picture comes out. Your picture comes out decent, put it out on Facebook. Let your friends know that you know you are enjoying watercolors and um, put a price on it. Um, you can look at my Facebook page if you want to, Cindy Williams Moore Artist, and, um, and Cindy Williams Moore, that's my regular Facebook page. Um, scout out there, see what people are selling theirs for. If you're starting off, put a lower price on them. You can run prints and sell them if um, to your friends. 
I could only work online for a while. I just went through a season where I've had COVID. So um, I need to be able to pay for my own supplies. And how I do that is by selling my art. Um, and I will set a portion of that aside in order for me to buy my brushes, buy my paints. Um, so what we've talked about with paints, uh, brushes today, was ones that I'm using. Second of all, they collect dust, you know, sitting out here in a jar. These are my larger sizes. Um, they will collect dust. You've got to clean them up before you paint. And you may need to make sure that you're washing them. Um, and I do have a video up that talks about when you wash them, um, when you're done, dip them in gum Arabic. Um, just a little bit. Uh, but you want to put that on there. This was super hard when I started pressing this for you. Now it's nice and soft, but see how how wonderful that shape is? That's because it's fresh washed. And then when it was done, I took a little bit of gum Arabic and did this, which shaped the brush. I let it dry and it holds that shape. This one, this guy's coming up for a wash. He, he needs a good wash. Um, I probably have some paint in there and a ton of dust. Um, there, some of these brushes, um, they do better. They, they hold their shape more, but you still have to clean them out. Once a month, I would do. Um, I always look to see what other artists are doing. So we covered that. I covered different brushes that I'm using and why I use them. So I think that's it for today. I hope you guys are doing well. Look forward to seeing you again soon.